my name is Matt and in today's video we'll just be discussing a lighting case study that I did with this Claymate photograph, photograph or product render product shot sorry that I found on Pinterest um, so I recreated it in Blender and as we could see here this is the results that I got but I really wanted to talk to about um, the lighting setup for this scene because the reason that I do a lot of these projects are recreations of photographs um, of, of products like these is just to understand um, the lighting and try to deconstruct what the photographer studio was probably like in terms of the lighting setup that he had for his scene. So as you can see in this one instead of just using straight Im image planes with emission shaders of, with them on them with um, gradients on them I use a combination of both of those with also Blender's built-in lamps and I just found that you know again Blender's lights are it will give you a little bit more power in terms of punch in terms of the, the, the intensity of the light as it is and these planes that I use here with gradients on them just give me a little bit more control in terms of the fall off of the light because as you could see at the edges of the lights they are very um, feathered at the edges so if we could have a look here, we're going to just turn off all of these lights. I don't have them in collections this time around, but that, that would be able to work. So I start off with the light at the back. And this was the most obvious because it was going to give me the shadow that I wanted here. As you could see, it is a very harsh light. It's a point light. If you look at the settings here. It's a point light with the value of a 10,000 watts and the value, the size is very small. And the small, the bigger the light gets, the softer the shadow gets. So I wanted a harsh shadow, so I use a small value with a high power output of the light. This light is the light at the front. And the reason for that was just to light up the front part of the product itself and we could have a look at that at a later point as well but this one was just a rectangle with 12 I mean 200 watts because I didn't want it that strong to blow out the shadow that was here if I turn it on together you can see I didn't want to lose all of the details or uh, lose the whole entire shadow so I kept it at a very low and I changed it from square to rectangle this one is the backlight and this would allow me to get the reflections in the glass at the bottom and at the top so you could get a little bit of caustics there and the last light was the light at the top and this is this light as you can see it's a very soft fall off if you go into click on it and you go to material settings you can see it does emission shader a color ramp plugged into emission shader and if you go into shading tab this is just the setup that you have right here in terms of it Pretty much the same setup that I usually use all the time for my lamps, um, just with that value on it. So let me just go back to this and turn off that. So you could see it, the examples from here as well. So if you come here, if you turn on all of the lamps now, and the reason that I kept this one off for last is to show you how it would look without that front light illuminating the logo here at the front. As you can see, the image is very dark. You get to the reflection. This reflection is actually the shadow on the, the ground, ground plane here, uh, the background plane that is reflecting here in the lamp. And we actually have that same reflection here. And the spotlight at the front is what's going to give you the illumination and the clearness of all of that. And you still doesn't lose the shadow. So it's just a practice of knowing how much power to give a lot of these lights um, and I kind of, as you can see, I deconstructed the lighting setup that the photographer used for this. Now the reason that I like to go on Pinterest and find product renders like this to is again to for me to practice my lighting and to figure out how the photographer had his studio lit at that point in time. Um, so I don't always go on Pinterest and, and recreate everything. For example, this is my first project that I did before. This was a 
my first attempt at cosmetic renders. Moza was just a fictional brand that I came up with to make this piece. I got my inspiration from Pinterest and pulled different ideas from a few images to store and, and store them on a image reference. So pretty much I've just got a lot of them, a lot of images, put them together and just draw references from different images and stuff. And I just came up with a fictional brand called Moza and I did that. So I also got some inspiration from their Elliot. As you can see here, this is his, his Instagram page. Um, he actually did a YouTube tutorial on cosmetic renders and I felt inspired enough to try something myself and rather than recreate what he had. So I came up with Moza and that is what I did for Moza. So this was my first cosmetic render as you could see. So I like again, it's just for me to get practice and to understand and to understand lighting a little bit more. So th this one, as I mentioned before, was more of a, a lighting case study rather than trying to copy every exact thing that the person has here. Because as you could see, they have um, water droplets here in the shadows. And to recreate that, we just gotta not gonna go through everything, but we just gonna briefly show you I'm oh, sorry if a new scene don't save go to blender of course it crash it open okay so we have here everything I'm gonna add an image plane and I'm just gonna show you what technique you would have to do in terms of if you wanted to recreate those water droplets as well so we go to go to this, go to edit mode, right click, subdivide, set your subdivision. So let's say a 50, and we have a very dense plane. Add it back up to tab mode. Go to go to add a UZ sphere. You go to scale it. Go to move it out of the way. Scale. You go to shade it smooth. Go to scale it on the Z. Then go to duplicate it. You gotta scale this one on the way on the X just to make some variations. I'm not gonna go too much in detail. And you gotta put M new collection, call these drops. Okay, and then you gotta come back to the plane and you gotta go to the particle system. You gotta add a new particle system. You're gonna type go into here. And when you go to here, you're going to go to render, the render tab, you're going to use collections because I place these into the collections. And you're going to choose the collections, which was drop. As you can see, all of the water droplets are here. You close back the render tab, then you're going to go to few weights. Now, before you go to few weights, you're going to highlight, you're going to go into weight painting mode because I forgot to do that. What you could do, you could right click, you could change the width of the actual brush and you could start with painting. Now the areas that are red are areas where a lot of the particles are going to be. And you could just imagine this to be the same shadow here. So just imagine that to be the shadow. That is the shadow that we have here. You could go back into edit mode and the reason I must mention too that the weight paint is only going to work if you have a lot of vertices. That is why it subdivided it in the beginning. Because if you don't have sub the, um, subdivisions, it's not going to work. So you go to weight paint, go back into object mode. As you can see here, go back into the particle tabs. We are going to go to vertex groups. Now we made a ver vertex group just now where you're being painting. And as you can see, all of the particles are going to follow. The density because we want there to be the density we don't want the length because you're not really working with actual here particles so if we go back into the render we could change the random size and the scale amount and that's what we would use if we wanted now obviously you would work on it to make things a little bit more clear um, if you want so could add more variations and then you could shade and do all of these different things but that's how you could actually replicate having the shadow the water droplets in the shadow so you make variations and then you could do that 
and if you do do make it um, you could follow me on Instagram you could tag me into the images that you want and yeah I would like to see what you come up with at that point of time but I hope this again I hope this video was informative to you I hope it would have inspired you to you know look at some of these projects and try to deconstruct them for yourselves and see what you could do and yeah I hope it was informative and enjoy your rest of your day thanks for watching and just ask you to like subscribe and share this video if it was helpful to you thanks